Hey, what's up YouTube? Back with your boy Luke and today's video is going to be about the Volkswagen Beetle that I imported from Mexico. So if you guys are looking for videos on the cruises or the bars or the girls or other things that I do videos on, probably want to go ahead and skip over this one. Um, a couple of weeks ago I put up a video of my Volkswagen Beetle that I bought in Mexico, the old school bug, right? And I brought it up to Texas and parked it at my mom's house and I've been getting a lot of emails, a lot of questions, a lot of comments from people wanting to know how I imported this car from Mexico into the United States. So that's what I'm going to explain for you. There's a lot of things online that say that you have to import it, you have to pay taxes, you have to change the pan, you have to declare it to customs. You know, there's all these different things that are being said online as far as the emissions and, and just all kinds of rumors, basically. And like everything else that's online, I've found that most of the stuff that people are saying, okay, this is all stuff being said by people that have never actually done this, okay? You have people just talking, right? They don't know what the hell is going on. So I did it. I'm going to tell you how I did it. So if you want to do it, you can be able to do it too. All right, folks, you ready to know how I did this? How I got this car over from Mexico into the United States? Okay, I'll tell you. I drove it across the border. That was all there is to it. I didn't have to pay any taxes. I didn't have to do any emissions. I didn't have to do any smog. I didn't have to declare anything to customs. I drove the car across the border. Now, look, if you live on the southern border, maybe you live in California or Texas, Arizona, New Mexico. If you live on the southern border, you know if you've been in San Diego or Tucson or even Phoenix or L.A., uh, Texas, the Valley, there are cars everywhere with Mexican license plates, okay? Just because a car was made in Mexico or is in Mexico, those people still come across the border and shop and go on vacation. There's absolutely nothing wrong with a Mexican car being driven in the United States. Same thing with Canadian cars. You know, if you live up in North Dakota, Montana, Washington State, New York, you see Canadian license plates all over the place. So let me tell you how I did this. I found the car, a friend of mine found the car in Mexico City. We bought it. He drove it up to Monterey, Mexico. I flew into Monterey, Mexico. I picked up the car. I drove it back to Laredo. When I crossed the border in Laredo, it was kind of funny. I crossed the border in Laredo and I had my passport in my hand. And when I pulled up, the U.S. Customs agent goes, oh no, oh no. When he looked at this car, it's a sharp car, right? And I was like, what's going on, man? He's like, you're going to secondary. First thing he said, and I don't know why he said it. So I went to secondary, you know, U.S. citizen. Here's my passport. They checked the car and he goes, all right, look, man, you're coming in, but the car is not. And I go, no, car's coming with me. I'm with the car and we're not doing that. And he was like, you cannot bring this car in the United States. And I said, no, you're absolutely wrong. Number one, I'm a U.S. citizen and you can't refuse me entry to the United States. And guys, I do a lot of passport videos. And let me tell you something. If you're a United States citizen, no way, no how can U.S. Customs ever refuse you entry. Doesn't matter if you don't have any ID at all. OK, think about people that go to Mexico on vacation and they get robbed or they lose their ID or something. OK, they have to let you back in. It's as simple as a live scan, thumbprint, they ask you for your social security number. It's the federal government, folks. All your info just pops up on the, on the computer screen. So basically he says, look, dude, I know what you're doing. He goes, are you an oil filled guy or a pipeline guy? And I said, why would you ask that? But I'm oil filled. And he says, well, check this out. He says, all you oil filled and pipeline guys, you guys have disposable income and you come down here and you buy cars and all kind of other products and stuff that you're not supposed to have. You bring it back to the United States, it winds up on eBay and you wind up selling it and making money. I said, well, I can't help that. I said, first of all, this car is not mine. I said, it belongs to a friend of mine and I'm taking it to San Antonio and we're going to have some customization work done to it. And he says, well, you have to go import it and pay taxes on it. So it went from you can't bring it in to you're going to have to go pay taxes on it. I said, no, I don't have to pay taxes on it because I'm not importing anything, dude. I'm simply going to San Antonio and coming back in the car. We're just going to have some work done on it. It's going to be there a couple weeks tops. And um, 
he pretty much didn't like it. And he said, well, do you have insurance on it? And I said, yeah. And I had actually bought the insurance just, which I normally wouldn't do for like one day for 19 bucks. So I showed him the insurance and he was like, basically, Hey man, I don't believe you, but there's nothing really I can do. So, um, go ahead and go on and be safe. And it's a nice car. And that's all I did to it. So I get the car back to Texas now, check this out. If you go down there and you buy one of these cars, folks, and you go back to Texas or you bring it back to Arizona or your state, wherever you're from, the problem is you're going to have to apply for a title to these cars. That's easy. You just take the car to the DMV with a bill of sale. You apply for a title. You'll get a title. Okay. The car has a 17 digit VIN number. That's not a problem. Well, after that, the one problem you are going to have is it passing emissions and it passing inspection. Luckily for me, the one I bought happened to be 20 years old. And depending on your state, the last models that they made were 2003. So they're basically all almost 20 years old now. But depending on your state from 20 to 25 years old, the car becomes an antique and it's exempt from emission standards. So basically what I did is when I went to go get the license plates and register it, I told the guy, I go, here's the title, you know, it's over 20 years old. And he goes, well, if it's over 20 years old, it's exempt. And boom, he gave me my inspection, my green sheet. I went back to the DMV, presented them with the inspection paperwork, and they gave me license plates on the car. Now I have, now I have tags, title, registration, everything. Okay, I'm good to go. So I didn't change the pan. I didn't pay any taxes. I didn't jump through any hoops. I didn't go through any bullshit. That's how you do it. You drive across the border. Now, if you don't want to catch a lot of flack, I would recommend the person that you buy the car from, accompany them and have them drive it across the border. Because a lot of Mexicans own those cars and they go back and forth across the border and it's no problem, right? It doesn't raise suspicion. But when you have a white guy driving that car across the border, it kind of throws up a red flag. Hey, hit me up on email, comments. You got any questions, concerns? Um, I'll tell you exactly how I did it. I give you recommendations and uh, you can do it too. There's nothing to it. Don't listen to what people have to say online. It's absolutely not correct. Guys, subscribe to my channel, okay? Hit that like button, subscribe to my channel. I'll be doing some more videos on things I talk about pretty soon. Talk to you later. Bye.